Elizabeth and Jacinta, thank you very much for joining us. So, Elizabeth, as a sex discrimination commissioner, and you've been in the role now for seven years. Seven years. I know, years. longest ever. <laughs> um, what do you see um, as the biggest challenges around women understanding their personal finances? How do we get women to take responsibility mm. for their personal finances? You're right, because I think for young women, it's not something that's um, taught in the education system mm -hmm. necessarily, but not only that, I think when we look at um, you know being a good woman, maybe even a strong woman, woman, um, finances don't necessarily play a part. Whereas if we looked at what makes a man strong, economic power is one mm. of the key things that makes him strong. Mm. So I mean, I say to my daughter every day, I say now repeat after mum, a man is not a financial plan. <laughs> we need our own economic. Do you say empowerment. that every day? Well, not every day. <laughs> every week, though, I think it's the most important it is thing. Important. And it is because with economic power comes power in a relationship, mm -hmm. power in organisations, the power to have choices in your life. I just, I actually think it's the issue of our age for women, mm -hmm. and that is economic independence. Well, I think it's really important to have Jacinta here because mm. you would be quite independently wealthy anyway. You were yeah. runner-up Miss Universe. Yeah. Um, I, I hesitate to ask whether you're mm -hmm. earning more money than your fiance. Mm -hmm. That would be kind of a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> About half as much. <laughs> but, and I'm proud to say that too, you yeah. know. I, he's, it's probably one of the first um, males that I've met who, who's actually earned more, more money than, you. than me, you <laughs> know. And, and I think, you know, your finances don't define who you are and it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't make you any better than, than anyone else. But I do think financial independence is so important. Not for think, women. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, you sit on, on many um, global bodies mm. as well, um, so you, you have an access to uh, stories um, that we don't see much of in Australia. The domestic violence situation we know is, is, is mm. huge here. I think it's probably one of the biggest issues that we confront as modern women. Where do you think we're headed um, in this country? Are we going to get real change or are we still, you know, we're still talking too much and not, and, not, and not actually doing anything in this area? Yeah, look, I think there has been in the last year a shift from talk to action and I think that's really important. But if I can just say this, and that is that um, domestic violence is at epidemic proportions, mm. not just here in Australia, but globally. What I do know, and just coming back from the United Nations a couple of days ago, is that there are now more women living in an intimate relationship characterised by violence than there are malnourished people on the planet. You guys are so great. Um, have, has it touched either of your lives? Well, it's touched not personally my life, mm. but in my extended family. Right. Yes, most definitely. And, you know, it's interesting when what you do know when you walk into a group, one in three women will have experienced some mm -hmm. form of physical violence, 40% of that will have been domestic or family violence. The internet is becoming a new medium for um, tracking, controlling and violence against women. And you know, wow, the idea that, um, you know, that tracking devices, and I see this, I hear from women every day in the women's refuges that I mm. go around, so they'll move to a, a, an undisclosed location, essentially a safe house, and next thing their partner will be walking out the front, how's that? Well, because the kids' toys have got GPS technology <gasps> put in them, oh the car, God. he's got a tracking yeah. device on the car. If you put, um, you know, uh, um, track my wife into Google, you will get so many millions of hits it is so it's, disturbing. It's really the nature of it's changing, but it come, the heart of it comes back to control mm -hmm. and gender gender inequality. That is a power imbalance between men yeah. and women. Jacinta, you're around football clubs. Yeah. Um, so are you alarmed from what you see, or do you think there there is improvement? Um, I think you know, with my experience of Lance, obviously, you know, he's he's such a gentleman, and he's the man that's going to be my husband. So I, you know, with him, he, you know. I haven't seen anything with him, but with other men, I've definitely seen it. And I think the most shocking thing for me is the way that young women, or women in general, act around these sports stars. Mm -hmm. And it's something that's very, very disappointing for me. I have seen things in clubs that would make mother's skins crawl. And like what? What are, you talk what are we talking about? I've, I've, seen, I've seen girls lift skirts up and put men's hands under, you know, under their skirts. This was even before I, I knew Lance, you know, out and about in some places in Melbourne. You see a lot and it's almost like they will do anything to, to have the glory of being with a footballer. So we've got a sex discrimination so commissioner <laughs> sitting next like, to you. How do we change that? Yeah, how do we I change mean, that? And what do you say? It's really disappointing to hear that. But I do think, I mean, sporting, sporting mm. icons like your fiancé and other mm. really 
powerful, decent men, because they do have a lot of power, they have a lot of influence, mm -hmm. um, when they stand up and actually speak out against, say, violence against women about that type of behaviour, that will have an impact. People mm -hmm. will listen. Instead of, you know, when a message comes through of a girl showing it all around to mm. their mates or whatever, there needs to be, uh, I don't know, it's like a cultural shift. No, that's actually not okay. You hear this a lot in the global discourse, mm -hmm. is that particularly in Western nations like Australia, that we sexualise women. We're seen yeah. as sexual objects, sexual toys, and maybe when we're seen like that, mm -hmm. women start to behave like that. I want to pick up, though, on, on the male aspect of it mm -hmm. and the champions of change. Yeah. Because you set that up. That was your, that'll be your legacy. Um, there was some criticism. Can we get mm. men involved in uh, increasing the numbers of women in leadership roles inside companies? Absolutely. Shouldn't we be able to do it without them? Mm. I think you both agree that it's really important to get men on side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I started to understand after a couple of years in the role, and as Jacinda was saying, we women are in heated agreement about most things. <laughs> including freedom of expression. You should be able to wear whatever you want to say. Right, I'm with you. Um, Particularly when but, you look like this. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, but I, I think I started to understand, actually, that we don't necessarily hold the levers of power in organisations, in nations. And what we need to do is we need to work with those who have power mm -hmm. to create change in the system. So when I started to think about that a bit more, I thought, well, actually, that's about men taking the message of gender equality to other men mm -hmm. in relation to violence, but also in relation to women's leadership. And um, that's when I decided, I thought, okay, well, if that's the deal, I'm gonna pick up and ring Australia's most powerful and influential men. And, and that's did. what I did. And how's and it going? It like, has are, been are they amazing. really committed or are uh, they just ticking a box? There is no gender washing in our strategy, no chance. You don't act, you're out. No <laughs> you freeloaders. <laughs> yeah. What's your idea of success around the, males of the, the, male, the, the Ch male champions of change? Well, it's when they don't need me. Success would be for every man in Australia to be a male champion of change. Mm. And not only that, um, when, the, when they're out there really actively taking that message to other men. I'm going to ask you two, yes, just yes. Um, a couple, um, two last questions, mm -hmm. and I'll start with Elizabeth. You've had an incredibly successful career. Um, you're accomplished across um, so many areas, uh, and now you're on the global stage. You're married. You have two children. Um, what, what does success look like to you? Well, for me, success is very much about um, just the loving relationships that I have with my with my kids, my beautiful husband, my sisters, and and friends, but also knowing. Um, for me that I've done something that's taken us forward because I've started to understand that progress is not made in one big leap it's a lot of small intentional steps mm -hmm. and I want to be part of that picture um, so that's really what success is for me. Incredible. What does success look like to you Jacinta Campbell? Um, I think you know very simply it's waking up with with a smile on my face. And I know that that sounds very simple, but it comes back to, you know, what you said, yeah. le leading a life of meaning. And, um, you know, I, I, I always have a goal that, you know, when you meet someone, you want to leave them better than they were when you met them. Yeah. And that's how I try to live my life as well. Um, do what, what you can with what you have. Both of you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks.